Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Expert Voices. My name is Lucy Challenger and I'm the CEO of Polo and Tweed and I am joined today, I'm very excited, by the fabulous Paul Jones. Hi Paul, how are you? Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you and thank you so much for coming to speak with us. And, oh, and... you are so welcome Lucy, I would do anything for you. <laughs> oh, bless you. <laughs> well, and now Paul and I go back a very long time um, and um, I love Paul. I have been his friend. I have been his follower you know I have followed his career as, as it has blossomed over the years and, <laughs> and, um, and, and, and I'm so excited but for those listening who perhaps aren't familiar with Paul's work um, Paul maybe you could tell us a little bit about yourself and your amazing career to date. Um, I am a session stylist so I work in fashion and I do hair so I'm a hairstylist in that world. I do celebrities, uh, fashion shows, uh, magazines um, I do um, yeah so I, I, I do that I do little bits of education I've got um, Instagram TikTok so I'm constantly creating uh, content for that um, and I've been doing I mean I've been a hairstylist 24 years and 25 years this year and I have been a session stylist eight years so um, so to I started when I was 32 I think and now I'm 40 so yeah it's been a long time. <laughs> and so what's the difference between a session stylist and a, and a, a hairstylist for those listening? Um, so a session stylist is, um, I mean, basically when I started a session styling, um, I had to basically retrain and forget, you know, all of my, at the time, I, um, all of my years in salons, um, I had to forget it all and retrain because it, it's a very different world when you hairdress in a session world because when you're in the salon, you're probably doing a lady's hair that, you know, wants to go out and look good for that night or you might do someone for a wedding, or you might do someone for a prom. But when you work in this, the session world, you you have to learn um, to make someone's hair, you know, from shoulder length to waist length, then you'll have an hour to do it. And you'll have to learn, you know, the quickest way to do a really tight ponytail and how to keep that ponytail in place. So all these, these kind of skills that you learn along the way, you necessarily, you know, you're not going to do that in a salon. You know, you, if you do extensions in a salon, it's going to be for three to six months. You know, when when I do it, I have to do it, you know, for that shoot and then take the extensions out at the end of it. So it, you, I think you, I always look at it as you, you're creating a character. So when you get a model or a celebrity, um, you know, you're creating a character. So whoever that character might be, um, you know, like you, if I'm doing a photo shoot and the model's a 17 year old girl, but they wanted to look like Jessica Rabbit, you know, then you have got to create sexy hair that's going to, you know, suit a, you know, a, a model that's maybe 17, 18. So it's, you know, it's, it, it's a whole different world, you know, in a salon, you're dealing with that person. When you do what I do, you are creating, helping to create a character. Yeah. And you're also part of, you're a cog in a machine. So, you know, it, it's not just the hair, it's the makeup, it's the styling, it's the nails, you know, there's lots of cogs in the wheel to, you know, when you see Julia Roberts or uh, Kate Moss or uh, whoever on the red carpet, there's lots of elements that have gone to get Julia Roberts or Kate Moss to look the way that she does. Yeah, no, I understand. That's really interesting. And so how much would you be always, would you always have the prep before you go to a session like that? Would you know the look that you're going to create and then you spend time researching it? Like the example you gave with a 17 year old that needs to look, you know, all vampy. Um, or or, or uh, will you often be throwing things on the spot and then have to- Always on the that? spot. It's like, sometimes you'll get, if it's, if it's going to be a wig shoot, for example, then they'll always give you a bit of notice for that, but not necessarily all the time, because there has been times where you're on a shoot and suddenly the photographer or director or creative director might say, oh, we want this girl to, to have waist length hair. So you just have to be prepared. It's like being a Boy Scout. You have to, you know, if if it's a big shoot, I take everything. So you have to take a whole salon worth of kit to the job so you're you know I have like three suitcases full of you know extensions and tongs and crimpers and uh stuffing you know to make you know big you know so you're just ready for any eventuality but if it's 
um, a celebrity you know, for example, and you know that they're just going to have their normal everyday hair, then I wouldn't necessarily take three suitcases full of kit with me. <laughs> with four Ubers travelling behind you carrying Yes, <laughs> exactly. So no. Um, so, it, so it just depends on the job, really. But to be honest, as a creative person, I work better when I'm kind of put on the spot, when you just have to um, pull yeah. something out of my head. I, all I need is a visual reference and I can do it. So I just need a picture of whatever it is is in that person's brain and then I can create whatever it is they want. Wow, that's incredible. And, and obviously you mentioned Kate Moss and you've, you've worked with high profile people, you know, Sarah Morrissey, Jade, Jade Burt, etc. You know, does working with these high profile people phase you? Do you get nervous? Do you get more no, anxious or do, does it make you more? No, so just different. people, never. Yeah never get nervous like because they're just you know a celebrity is just a person that's the only way I look at them you know yeah. like it's they just have might have more money or you know a bigger career or you know but they're no different to me and you they're just you know what they do is a job the same as what me and you do it's I never get nervous yeah, that's good that's good to know so yeah. I mean I think me personally, as you know, you know, I run my own business with Polar and Tweed. I'm always having to think of new ideas, reacting like you do in, in your line of work. And I think the one thing that allows me to do my job really well is to have some structure outside of my day to day work because it can be quite reactive. And, you know, I like getting up and doing my exercise. I like training. I like spending time with my family. You know, what is it that you like to do? Do you have routines or anything? That, and what makes you want to get up and, and, and find this creative? creative challenge each time you go to work I think like for me exercise is so important it always I mean I've exercised for a very long time so you know if I've got to be on set for nine o'clock I'll be in the gym at six you know if I've got to be on set for half past eight or eight o'clock I'll be in the gym for half past five obviously not now because we're in the middle of a lockdown um but you know I'll I have exercise you know here so I at home so before I do that I will exercise and you know, for years I, I wouldn't exercise in the morning, but now if I exercise in the morning, it just clears my head for the rest of the day. Um, if the day turns into a 14, 15 hour day, I kind of regret it then. <laughs> like, why did I get up at like five o'clock? Um, and also if I know the job is going to be like a three day TV ad, you know, because TV ads are notoriously long days, I'll just in my head say, okay, three days no exercise because I can't physically be doing something as big as a TV ad, you know, running from set to set, you know, probably having to travel to wherever it is we're doing it and of exercise. So, you know, so I think it's, it's, it's loving what I do mainly, you know, that's what kind of, I never get bored. So I, I'm never going to work and thinking, you know, when you speak to people and they say, oh, I can't wait for Friday or they'll say TGI Friday, right? I never get that feeling. Never. I never get to the end of the week and think, oh, I'm so glad it's the end of the week. You know, like every time I go to work, it's just pure joy. That's so cool. That's so that's so awesome. So if someone's listening to this and thinking, oh, I would really, really love to do what you do. Uh, you know, where do I start? What do I need to do? You know, could you put your finger on maybe two or three tips that could help someone start to enter the world that you work in? The first, I mean, the best tip that I could give someone is know what it is you want to do, you know, because there's lots of different worlds that, you know, that there's fashion, there's beauty, there's uh, celebrities, red carpet, there's, um, you know, there's lots of different worlds that there's, there's TV, there's film. So once you know where it is you wanted to go, I mean, for me, it was fashion. So, you know, I wanted to get into fashion and, and beauty. So once I knew that, after probably a year or so into my career, I was like, right, okay, then you you fly. So it's firstly, know what it is you wanna do. Um, second, there's no real manual to know what to do. So it's not like, um, you know, if you hairdress normally in a salon, you would do your MVQ and you would go to college. With what I do, it's very different. And I mean, some of the best hairdressers I've ever met never had proper training like I had, you know, they didn't go to college. So I wouldn't say, oh, you know, start in a salon, you know, I think find your own path. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if, if, if you want to do what I do, you know, find, 
find what makes you happy don't try and be me or be you know other people that work in the industry you know be you and find which way it is you want to go um and and as well I think the best bit of advice because I mean obviously when you do this it's not like having a job you have to freelance and make sure you've got your bread and butter so make sure you have a way of making money because you know when I started this I didn't get paid for about two years so I had to work two years for free and I had to you know I worked in a salon I used to travel back to Birmingham Thursday Friday Saturday work in a salon make money and then come back to London because that was the only way I, I that was how I carved my path so make sure you got your bread and butter I mean that's probably the most important advice you could give to any freelancer yeah no that's really interesting because I, I imagine with with your world particularly people sort of are seduced by the celebrity and the, the glitz I mean in my world the same they think that if you're going to be a butler you're going to be sipping the champagne and sunning yourself on the super yacht but actually you have to go through that process of really hard graft and work for free in your industry to, to get those opportunities in the first place. And can I just say, whenever I've done jobs where there's butlers, they're never sipping champagne on yacht. <laughs> they're too busy working. So, <laughs> so it's, you know, it's the same for me, you know, like people that think that, you know, in, in the world of hair styling and makeup artists and fashion that's glamorous, it's not, you know, like there's been, I remember one time I was doing shows. I used to be on a hairdresser called Sam McKnight and um, he's, I used to be on his team and I used to travel the world with Sam doing shows. You know, we used to do Chanel, Dries Van Noten, Balmain, you know, and we, I traveled, I was fortunate enough to travel the world with Sam, who is the most incredible hairstylist. And, you know, we did a show for Balmain and it was in the Paris town hall and it was amazing. It was like you were in a palace, right? And the next day we did Vivian Westwood and we were, and the show was in a car park on the edge of Paris and it was filthy. <laughs> and it was like, I think it was in, it, it was uh, autumn, winter. So it was in March and it was freezing. And we were all like trying to huddle around heaters. And, and it was so funny because we, you know, we'd been one day, we'd been in this, you know, you know, Cara Delevingne opened and it was just a dream, it was a dream show. And then the very next day we were all on our hands and knees in a dirty car park on the edge of Paris, um, eating vegetarian soup because obviously Vivian Westwood doesn't have any meat. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah, no, well that's, that's enough to bring you back down to earth, isn't it? <laughs> exactly, so it's not all glamour. So it, I mean, there is bits of glamour and you know, I, I've had I've had some amazing experiences doing what I do, but it's not all highs, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, it's interesting what you were talking about a moment ago about um, sort of education and that some of the incredible talent in the industry aren't necessarily conventionally trained. So what sort of emphasis would you put on education and training? Because I mean, a lot of people come to me for training because they want to be a better housekeeper. They want to be a better butler and better skills in, in their physical sense. But it sounds like, it's not necessarily the right route for everyone to take. No, because I mean, it's, there's not a course you can do in this. Um, I mean, I assisted. So what you do is you assist the big artists. So the, the people at the top of the game, um, you know, in makeup, it'd be Pat McGrath, Charlotte Tilbury, Val Garland, you know, hairdressers, it would be Sam at night, Guido, uh, Duffy, um, you know, all these are huge, massive artists you know they do YSL they do Christian Dior they do Chanel they do Fendi and you assist so you work hard you get on the team it's not a given that you're going to get on the team um you know you're literally given one chance when you get that chance you make sure you do everything in your power to be the best assistant the most helpful assistant you can on that show or if you're assisting on a shoot and you learn as you go. So, you know, that was, that was, that's how you, that's how I learned. Now I'm not saying that that's the same for everyone, but you know, that for me, it was like going to university. You, you know, I was, I was on Sam McKnight's team for five years. And like I said, I traveled the world with him and I had some amazing experiences and learned so much invaluable skills from a legend. So, you know, for that, I'll be eternally grateful, but you know, and that, that's to me, the best way that somebody wants to learn the skills, the best kind of skill set to, to push you forward, that's the way to do it. 
yeah, that's really interesting. And, and and again, you mentioned earlier, you know, we're back in lockdown again, hooray, uh, and uh, COVID has changed our lives. And one of the things I had to do as a business owner was adapt because, you know, suddenly people couldn't come to me to train in person. You know, they had to do it remotely. So we set up our e-learning platform. And, and I know that you are a star in, on TikTok in your own right and you know millions and millions of people watch your videos um, <laughs> but, but did you have to adjust for this sort of the digital world as it were did it did it allow you to spend more time doing your videos or is that something you're not you know do you, well, do you enjoy it? I have social media and you know I've maybe done a few videos before the lockdown 1.0 and then the first week we were locked down I was kind of I said to my friend, I spoke to my friend and I was like, what am I going to do? And she said, well, why don't you do some videos and start a TikTok? And I was like, I'm not doing TikTok. TikTok's for kids. Like, I'm not bothered about it. So did a couple of Instagram videos uh, talking about shampoo and stuff and they did really well. And then she spoke to her again and she said, you really should think about doing TikTok. So I was like, okay, so I did a couple of TikTok videos. Anyone that's tried to make a TikTok video will know how hard it is. So I did a few no one really watched them and then I did one and it got half a million views and I was like wow <laughs> it's like just like a bolt out the blue I was like okay and it was just me doing hair on a doll's head um so I then really took it seriously and I I used to give myself a schedule so for the week you know I would have Monday I'm gonna uh, film a video about shampoo for Instagram on Tuesday I'm gonna film three TikToks on Wednesday I'm gonna you know and I, that was that was how I survived yeah. um and you know I never would have gone on TikTok if it hadn't been for lockdown and you know I think my one video got 3.6 million views and I ended wow. up with nearly 100,000 followers and you yeah. know like I wouldn't have done any of that because the fact was before lockdown, I was too busy. I was, you know, I, I think in January and February, I was in the country for two months because I was, I traveled um, so much January and February. Um, you know, I was only here for two weeks. So, and then lockdown happened and then suddenly, but I think lockdown was a choice, you know, and it was what you chose to do with that time. You could sit in bed on your phone feeling sorry for yourself, or you could do something proactive, you know, and, whatever that is, whatever that is, you know, do an online course or, you know, learn to do yoga or, um, you know, like me, start a TikTok, whatever it is, you know. Yeah, no, and you're right. And I think mental health and well-being, people have struggled with that over COVID because- Oh, for, for, for sure. It, it like so many- It life, didn't it? It, it yeah. starts to look- Everyone. And at, look at ourselves under a magnifying glass of what do you do every day if you can't actually go to work or do the things that you're used to doing? But I think it's looking at it as a gift because, you know, like you would, I mean, a lot of people probably listening and, and, and watching will probably think, what's he on about? But it's, you know, when would you have this time? You know, one of my dear friends had twins and uh, in uh, December, uh, not gone the one before. So, you know, in March when lockdown happened, she's now had a year with her babies that she never would have had. You know, or um, I've got another friend who started a charity and she's raised £130,000 for charity. And, you know, like all these different things that people did that they didn't have to do. Um, you know, and on my Instagram, I've started a thing called the Paul Jones Project, which, you know, I interview inspiring people within, you know, the beauty and hair industry that I work in to in help inspire people. Um, so I interview them um, a bit like we're doing. And just try because you know I work in the hair world right and hairdressers can't work so in the start in salons they're all shut down so there's lots of hairdressers at home unable to kind of do the thing that they love so you know I think something like um 10 percent of salons have closed since COVID started so business is gone and I thought, OK, how can I help to inspire those people that maybe businesses are hanging by a thread, you know, or they're, you know, in a, their, their mental health suffering and they can't get themselves out of a hole. So I was like, OK, if I can talk to people and put that out there. So even if I help one person, so even if when, when I did the first one, I interviewed a guy in a salon and I just thought, OK, if that helps, if that conversation helps one person, then I'm happy. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't about numbers or how many people watched it. It was about, you know, if I can just help that one person that's, you know, that might need cheering up or wh whatever it is. So, you know, it was, you know, that's my new thing for lockdown 3.0. It's been, um, 
it's been the Paul Jones project or the PJP. <laughs> okay, so everyone listening needs to go and go and check that out. Yeah, I'm go and watch the PJP. Um, so obviously you, you've worked with these big names, you know, Kate Moss, um, Charlotte Tilbury, you know, the, these are sort of household famous, famous names. Yeah. Um, and, and many of the things you'll have seen, like talking about butlers, you cannot share with the world because it's not for them to know. It's for your eyes and ears only. But but could you tell us any sort of unusual or funny stories? And I'm sure you've had many um, that, that we might enjoy hearing. No, <laughs> there's lots I could say, but there's nothing I'm going to say, um, you know, because these people are entitled to their privacy. And I think as a hairdresser, you're in a unique position. Yeah. You know, you get, especially when you do someone regular, you know, like Charlotte Tilbury, I, you know, I've done for four years and you become friends and you're involved in their lives. You see, you know, I've seen Charlotte's children grow, you know, her youngest was one when I first started or two when I started doing hair and, you know, so it's like, you know, and, I would never disrespect that position that you have with these people because they, you know, they deserve their um, their privacy. Yeah, yeah. No, very good answer. You'd make a very good, <laughs> <a> good butler, Paul. <laughs> 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 okay, so moving on, uh, something that you didn't know was happening. We're going to do a quick fire round question. Yes, okay, I love this. So all you have to do is say that you've got a choice of two, and yep. you pick the one that you're most drawn to. Don't think okay. about it too much. You can give me any reasons why, but just answer. So for example, if I was to say cats or dogs, you would say... Dogs. <laughs> cool. Okay. Okay, ready? Yeah. Morning or night? Morning. Cartier or Tiffany? Neither. Netflix or party? Netflix. Fish or chips? <sighs> chips. <laughs> Always chips. <laughs> uh, Moroccan or Vidal? Oh, Moroccan or Vidal is in the hair brands. Moroccan. Brad or Angelina? Brides or Angelina? Brad, Brad or Angelina? Oh, Angelina, all day. <laughs> Rain or sun? Sun. Sea or pool? Who? Sea, swimming in the sea or swimming in the pool? Sea. Fast or slow? Depends what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Moving swiftly on. Chanel or Gucci? Neither. <laughs> <laughs> sweet or savoury? Uh, would have been savoury, but now it has to be sweet because I have weird, loads of weird dietary requirements. <laughs> Eggs or bacon? Eggs. Britney or Madonna? Oh, Madonna. Gold or silver? Silver. Today or tomorrow? Always silver. Nice. Um, and your lips are silver on your t-shirt? Yes. <laughs> um, what was the last one? Today or tomorrow? Today or tomorrow? Today, because I never worry about tomorrow. You know, I live in the present, in the now. Love that. Yay. So obviously we've spoken and I could literally talk to you all day um, and I'd like you to come and live with me at some point. Um, <laughs> you know, outside of that. We'll, get, we'll be turning to alcoholics drinking too much gin and tonic if I came to live with you. And can I just say to everyone, one of the biggest pushes I ever had in my career was from this lady um, who talked me into moving to London and I never would have done it if she hadn't have talked me into moving. So, you know, I owe a big thank you to you, Lucy Challenger. Oh, I remember that conversation. I think we were sat on a beach in Catalonia. No, we were sat around a pool. Around a pool, oh. <gasps> but we were near a beach. <laughs> <laughs> so, so my last question to you is, what do you think it takes to succeed in life or to work towards success? Just stay positive. I think it's like there's some, so much to be said about keeping a positive mind because nothing good can come. You know, like if you've ever been around someone that moans, all the time and it just brings you down and I think when you have a positive mindset whatever is going on in your life just keep that mind positive and you know you can do amazing things I you know I can't bear my one of my pet peeves is listening to people that say um you know they might say oh I hate my hair and I was like oh well if you booked an appointment at the salon and they're like no you know, it's just like, if, you, if you're really unhappy with something, change it. You know, like we, we all write our own stories. We all drive our own cars. And, you know, I think if you want to succeed in life, whatever that may be, whatever it is you want to do, just keep your eye on the goal and keep your mind positive. I love that. 
I love that. Profound, profound words from my very good dear friend, Paul Jones. Thank you. <laughs> so for everyone who's listening and wants to um, now stalk Paul forever, because I highly recommend you do um, in a good way on social media, <laughs> not at his home, um, you can go to his Instagram, um, Paul Jones Hair, um, and you can follow him. You can go on to TikTok. You can follow him there. Um, Paul Jones Hair there as well. Paul Jones Hair there as well. Exactly. So, you know, once again, thank you, Paul, from the bottom of my heart. You're it's so always welcome. a pleasure to see you. And I'm looking forward to drinking gin with you once this lockdown is over. Yes. <laughs>